Greetings to all the learners. Welcome to CEC lecture. The topic of analysis is globalization and development dilemmas, information technology revolution and debates on sovereignty. Dear learners, in this lecture we shall analyze important concepts like globalization, development, information technology, sovereignty and the big picture of global governance. This lecture shall explain dynamics of the process of globalization. In this lecture, we shall elaborate how globalization has had an important role in development. This lecture shall also underline benefits of information technology as a force. It shall discuss the need to highlight the related issues therein with the expansion of information technology on state sovereignty. This topic is very important for students from the discipline of political science, international relations, sociology, economics and most important it forms an integral part of the studies in contemporary political economy. As we begin our deliberations, let us first understand what do we mean by political economy. Political economy is an inter interdisciplinary branch of social sciences. When we look at global political economy, the focus of study therein is how do political forces shape global economic interactions. And then, uh, you know, we, we shall try to understand in the study of political economy focusing on how we must look at the interface between the political forces and its impact with reference to other related concepts like economics amongst others. We take a very important definition from the Oxford Handbook of Political Economy, quoting from there, that political economy refers to interdisciplinary studies drawing upon economics, sociology, political science in explaining how political institutions, the political environment, the economic system influence each other. Dear learners, as we are understanding political economy as an approach, an important reference we get from some of the earliest works of political economy, Adam Smith, Thomas Malthus, David Ricardo, all of them presented some very important insights into the study of politics and economy together, thereby presenting some of the classical works using political economy as an approach. Moving forward, let us now understand globalization. We all know globalization is a very important topic in the study of international relations. When we try to decipher the term globalization, it implies the rise of interrelationships, exchange between and among state and non-state actors. One of the important features of globalization is the integration of global apparatus, integration of global economy. Therefore, this aspect of integration of national with the international is marked by two defining features. Firstly, interconnectedness of states. Second, plurality of actors in international relations. Earlier, international relations was seen only from the point of view of the state. With globalization, rise of global markets, trade, finance, one has to acknowledge plurality of actors in IR wherein the states exist with the non-state actors. When we look at dimensions of globalization, namely opening up of national borders, rise of free trade apparatus, there is at the same time trade-offs involved, namely we find that in this integration, 
there is an increase in competition between and amongst countries. When we try to dwell deeper into globalization, talking about spread of products, technology, information, jobs across national borders and cultures, interdependence of nations around the globe fostered through free trade. At the same time, in this study, one has to look at the negative effects too, that is instability, economic crisis. In our debate, we shall try to see that how globalization has become an important aspect with the dynamics of development, which has been facilitated by information technology revolution. And one of the drawbacks of this process is therefore state sovereignty. We take reference to the work by Jagdish Bhagwati in defense of globalization. The work is from Oxford University Press. Now, this book within its first part talking about anti-globalization movement and its concerns, the second part talking about social implications of globalization, the third part talking about various facets of economic globalization, short-term capital flows. Now, important insights that we get from this work is that globalization, when properly governed, is in fact the most powerful force for social good in the world. Globalization is part of the solution, not part of the problem. Herein, you know, we take reference to the definition presented from the work of Jean Arts called that global events can via telecommunication, digital computers, audio visual media, rocketry and the like occur almost simultaneously anywhere and everywhere in the world. Dear learners, at this hour, the focus of spread of products of information technology therein lies with the big issue of territory. And this is why deterritorialization, that is how growing variety of social activities take place irrespective of the space and time. Herein, let us get the development side now. Development we all know implies progress, it implies increase in welfare. To analyze the concept of development in political theory, comparative politics, international economics, international relations, we have two broad contours that is perspectives. The first, the dependency theory. The dependency theory points towards unequal exchange relationship between developed and developing countries. In contrast to that, the modernization theory, that is how traditional societies will develop as they adopt more modern practices. Dear learners, we all know that when we talk about development, information technology has, is a very important variable there. Information technology is a catalyst for global integration in the age of globalization. Information technology has contributed to widespread access of information, economic activities, communication advancements. Technology is responsible for faster delivery of goods across long distances, which it has made possible all this process at lower cost. Technology has been there for ensuring contact between people and countries, contact one another around the world to access information instantly and to communicate at the same time from remote areas. Dear learners, information and communication technology at the same time has affected the social and cultural, environmental, economic aspects of globalization also in several ways. Now, as we are deliberating on how information technology has really presented a new revolution in the terrain of global governance, dear learners, we take reference to this very significant report from Jungtat Technology and Innovation Report 2021. Now, this report makes some very interesting 
insights and presents to us some interesting findings and this can be accessed from Jungtard's website jungtard.org. Now this report highlights that how frontier technologies already represent a 350 billion market, 350 billion dollar market which could grow to 3.2 trillion dollar by 2025. By frontier technologies what do we mean? We mean artificial intelligence, internet of things, robotics. Now today information technology is indeed a revolution and this is why Yungta Technology and Innovation Report 2021 points out that this offers great opportunities for those ready to catch this technological wave. But however, one cannot ignore the very significant aspect that how many least developed countries are somewhere unprepared to equitably use, adopt and adapt to the ongoing technological revolution. Now herein, quoting from the very significant remarks from Antonio Guterres, Secretary General United Nations at the UNTAD Technology and Innovation Report 2021 launch that, quoting the words of Antonio Guterres, Secretary General United Nations that this could have serious implications for achieving the sustainable development goals. New technologies hold the promise of the future from climate action, better health to more democratic and inclusive societies. Now we all know that today we are talking about the fourth industrial revolution. At the same time we know that the scale, speed and connectivity of technology and its driving force of fourth in, in, industrial revolution is unprecedented. Seen in this perspective, we now have to think about a mechanism, a thought process wherein we translate the challenges towards opportunities. To elaborate on this point, we take reference to the work by Klaus Quab, Nicholas Davis, the name of the book, Shaping the Future of the Fourth Industrial Revolution, A Guide to Building a Better Work. Now, in this book, there is a very important assertion that is emerging technologies, they do not predetermine forces and at the same time, opportunities and capabilities provided by artificial intelligence, distributed ledger systems, cryptocurrencies, advanced material and biotechnologies, how one must deliberate that they can be useful. Dear learners, with this we come towards the most important part that how globalization and these development dilemmas with the focus on information and technology revolution, how it has impacted the sovereignty of the state. When we talk about sovereignty, we all know it is a fundamental pillar of international relations. It is derived from the Latin word superanus through the French word sovereignat, the term originally understood to mean that is its idea of a supreme power. Sovereignty, the notion that governments are free to do what they want to do within their own territory has provided the organizing principle of international relations for several hundred years. When we talk about Peace of Westphalia which was signed in 1648. It ended the 30 and the 80 years war and created the framework for modern international relations. Dear learners, herein we must understand that the concept of state sovereignty, mediation between nations comes from the ideas of the Peace of Westphalia signed in 1648. Herein we must understand that idea of sovereignty over territory is fundamental to international law. With the rise of information, communication and technology, we cannot ignore that this fundamental idea of supreme power and authority has become a highly contested concept. To quote from the remarks of David Held's work, that is, sovereignty is a 
contested phenomenon. At the start to dwell deeper into debates concerning sovereignty, we take reference to the work Sovereignty, Organize Hypocrisy by Stephen Krasner. In this work, there is the reference that the word sovereignty has four distinctive attributes. First, international legal sovereignty, that is international recognition from states. Second, Westphalian sovereignty, that is principle of non-interference. Third, domestic sovereignty, that is ability of a state to maintain the monopoly of the use of violence within its territory. Fourth, interdependence sovereignty, that is capacity of a government to control the intra-borders movement of any kind. Now, seen with this perspective, we now try to understand that how today, when we look at information technology revolutions, there are debates that there is a violation, a contestation with respect to the principle of Westphalian sovereignty. We take reference to the work by M. Shaw, Theory of the Global State, Globality as an Unfinished Revolution, wherein there is a very clear remark that states were created to be sovereign, but now, due to globalization, often they give away the sovereignty to pooling. So, herein we see that how because of rise of information technology, we are living in a world wherein technology has percolated towards every realm of life. No doubt there are huge challenges with respect to information technology as a revolution, namely accessibility, equity, affordability, sustainability. But at the same time, the way integration has taken place because of technological revolution, the fundamental pillars of supreme decision making, that is namely sovereignty, is getting challenged because states are there in the foray to get more from development dynamics because, and at the same time technology is indeed a very important input in the mechanisms of development. Let us take reference to some very important arguments pointed out by Giles Babinet that is and we take it from institutionmontaigne.org that is data we all know has become the most important raw material of our time. Now, in this work, talking about technology induced tech sovereignty transfers, the author points, you know, to various examples from various countries and demonstrates that some transfers of sovereignty are sometimes carried out with the explicit support of public domain as well. Another important work as we are talking about debates on sovereignty because of globalization and development and the dilemmas of development therein, that work is from Dan Schiller, Digital Capitalism Networking the Global Market System. Now, this work presents to us an indirect reference with reference to the bigger picture of how today technology is having a bearing on sovereignty. We all know that internet has indeed led to new revolution in the world. Internet is a byproduct of the technological revolution, rise of new media has indeed provided new avenues of communication, exchange and interrelations and integration. Herein, the focus with reference to transformation of the internet, the author draws attention towards the other aspect namely that how it is a tool of digital capitalism. Using the uh, logic of expansionary market, the author points out that internet, though it began a political economic transition, 
it led to huge transformation but at the same time in our understanding of information of internet of information technology revolution also therein one has to focus on that whether it is impacted by digital capitalism by issues concerning the economics and the market of demand and supply the investor sides amongst others in the regulation of technological products so dear learners what we find here is that no doubt technology has led to huge changes with reference to the global governance dynamics we all saw that how in the present times there is a recognition of the significant role technology has played that today we factor in technology as a important revolution we all saw that how the young tart technology and innovation report points out that it has indeed a great market and future growth prospects but at the same time when we see that how this ict phenomenon has impacted globalization as well as the dynamics of governance process in many countless ways and one of the focus that how because of the scale the speed the reach the connectivity of technology there is a question mark on the decision making paraphernalia the supreme decision making and policy making apparatus of the respective nation states seen in this perspective that is sovereignty and its related term of ter territory are getting questioned because today the information technology revolution has put the world on a framework of space time compression what is global is connected to the local and what is local is connected to global at the same time territory and its very important pillar of sovereignty therefore gets challenged because technology has indeed connected the world has indeed ensured that mechanisms of global governance are not just existing at an anarchic level but at a decentralized level which has a direct bearing with respect to the individual seen in this perspective what we find that states are finding new contestations and claims on their decision making power on their sovereignty so therefore at a time where technology has presented huge benefits data being one of the most important variables in power as we understand development dynamics one cannot ignore that how it revolution has presented new challenges to the principle of westphalian sovereignty dear learners we hope that the lecture presented to you significant inputs and insights we look forward to positive and encouraging feedback from you all thank you very much